See, Ox today coming up in just a few moments from right now. Before we do, I have a little challenge for you to begin today's show. A while back, somebody commented 74 times on a single video, and so I would like to break that record. So here's what we will do. Whoever writes the most amount of individual comments on today's video and breaks the record, you are going to get a shout-out on an episode of Seahawks Today later this week. So, a little incentive. Let's see how you can do, and we'll get started here on today's show. Welcome in. Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show, we will break down Todd McShay's newest mock draft and who he has the Seahawks selecting with their four picks in the first two rounds. Also, later on, we will talk about the possibility of trading Noah Fant and what that could entail. Let's begin with Todd McShay's mock draft. McShay uh, released this mock draft this morning, and this is the first one that goes through uh, multiple rounds. And so with that, we already know the Seahawks have not two, not three, but four picks within the first two rounds. And so with that being said, let's go through these one by one of who McShay is projecting the Seahawks selecting. It starts with Jalen Carter at number five overall, the defensive tackle out of the University of Georgia. And you guys already know the terrific player that Jalen Carter is one of the best players in all of college football, in all American selection, all SEC, and according to Mel Kuyper, the number one player in this draft. But obviously, there are some other factors involved when it comes to Jalen Carter with the uh, car wreck that occurred in the state of Georgia back in January, his underwhelming performance in the pro day, and although he might be the best player in this draft, there are some concerns of why he moves down to five, potentially, and also with the uprise in quarterbacks with the stock of where they're headed as well. With that, here's what McShay had to say about the potential selection of Jalen Carter. Carter could really change this defensive line with his game-breaking quickness and power on the interior. They just have to be comfortable with their homework. And McShay is spot on here. And it's that very last sentence that I point to from Todd McShay about doing the homework. And as Pete Carroll and John Schneider evaluate what to do with this selection and the rest of their draft there, it all comes down to what they know and how comfortable they feel. And as the Seahawks read into this situation, and remember, they're going to know more about Jalen Carter than the rest of us will. Um as they read into this and figure out what the hell is going on with Jalen Carter, they should be able to make an educated decision one way or the other. If they are confident, if they feel like that they can overlook some of those things we've talked about, then you have to make this pick. You have to go with Jalen Carter if he is available there at five. If not, if you have question marks or concerns about that, then obviously you don't make the pick. But We'll see. If the Seahawks like what they see, if they do their homework and everything checks out, this is the pick you make. So I'm with Todd on that. Who should the Seahawks draft at number five overall? This is our pin comment today. You might get an ad break. If so, take advantage of it. Do you want to see the Seahawks bring in Jalen Carter? Or would you like to see them draft somebody else? Let us know in the comment section below what you think Seattle should do at five. To the second first round pick for the Seahawks, McShay projects... Seattle going wide receiver Zay Flowers out of Boston College with the 20th overall selection. And I know what you're thinking. This is going to turn some heads for some folks to go this high with the receiver spot. But let's hear Todd out on this possibility. I kept coming back to Flowers, who fits with the Seahawks as a third receiver behind DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. He has 4.42 speed to stretch the field and the open field elusiveness to turn underneath throws into big gains. Now, I'll say this. Zay Flowers, not my favorite receiver in this draft, personally. I like Jackson Smith and Jigba, Quentin Johnston, Jordan Addison, all three of those guys better than I do Zay Flowers. But Zay Flowers is still a very good player. To me, what stands out is just the idea that you're drafting a receiver here at 20. And I know a lot of you are saying to yourselves, well, the Seahawks need to focus on defense, and they have other needs 
that are bigger than the wide receiver position. And I get where you're coming from there. But the truth of the matter is, Tyler Lockett is not getting any younger, and he's already dealt with some injuries this past season of stuff we typically don't talk about with Tyler Lockett, showing age, even though he had a very good year. And so you have to start planning ahead for that future, and you do have a need at that third wide receiver spot. So although Flowers isn't my favorite receiver, I am open to, and I like the idea of drafting a receiver at 20 myself. With the first, second round pick for Seattle, McShay projects the Seahawks going with Georgia Tech outside linebacker Keon White at 37 overall. If you don't know much about Keon White, that's okay. Here's what McShay had to say. This pick keeps filling the edge rush cupboard and comes with great value. I see power and quickness in White's game, and it's no surprise that he ended up with seven and a half sacks last season. Now, Keon White, uh, here's what I want to do with this pick. Let's take two steps back and think kind of big picture, okay? When you look at Keon White or some of the other defensive talent that we've seen from this Seahawks team, I know that they removed the tender from Ryan Neal this past week. I was disappointed with that decision, but you understand with where the Seahawks are headed, with bringing in Julian Love, with bringing back Bobby Wagner, obviously Tariq Woolen and Kobe Bryant, those guys are going to get a year older Draymond Jones, obviously, all the things the Seahawks have done. And then what they potentially could do in this draft, whether it's guys like Jalen Carter or a Keon White, um, there's a chance that this defense turns into a real juggernaut here. Look, there was a lot of question marks about this defense in 2022, in particular with their inability to stop the run. And whether you go the second round with a guy like Keon White or it's the Carter pick or whatever it may be. Some of the players we've talked about defensively, I think you're looking at this Seattle defense taking a significant step up in 2023. To me, these picks like Keon White in the second round and these others here, you should get excited because we are going to see the Seahawks defense start to look like the Seahawks defense of old in 2023 with taking a big step forward for their future. More picks to get to here in just a second, but before we do, speaking of the NFL draft, the draft is just around the corner, and Seahawks draft hats are available on sale now. These are the same exact draft hats, folks, that your future Seattle Seahawks players will be wearing on draft night. When they take the stage at Union Station in Kansas City, Missouri, they are going to be wearing these exact draft hats, whether it's the ball cap version or the flat bill that comes in the white or the blue version, these are it. And you can get yours now before the draft even starts. So when draft night rolls around, you're at your draft party with your friends, and you're the cool one of the bunch because you're wearing the draft hat. You got that hat. You are that guy or you are that gal. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and get yours today. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks draft and get it just in time for the NFL Draft. You'll be looking snazzy when you do, so get yours today. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks Draft. Moving on now, the final pick of the second round for the Seattle Seahawks at 52 overall. McShay selects uh, for Seattle at 52. TCU center and offensive guard Steve Avila with the selection. Here is more on the pick from McShay. Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas look great as rookies at tackle, but the Seahawks still have work to do on the interior. Avila's technique and awareness pop on tape, and at six foot four, 332 pounds, he's a wall in the middle of the offensive line. Now, the thing that I like about Avila is the versatility factor of the ability to play center and the ability to play offensive guard. You bring in Evan Brown this offseason, and Evan Brown kind of similar to Avila in the sense that he can play center or offensive guard. And so, in theory, a guy like Avila, with what you have of trying to find a starting offensive guard and trying to find a center one way or the other, if you use a pick that high on a player like that, that should be a guy that's starting for you day one. And so, whether you play Brown at center and Avila at guard or vice versa, whatever it may be, This is a selection you should be making if you believe Avila is ready to go and start right away. So, to me, that's what I like. I think 
based on the tape and where he is on paper, Avila should be ready to start from the jump for the Seattle Seahawks team and make an instant impact at a big position of need that's highly important at this point. So, what do you think? We've we got still plenty more to get to here on Seahawks today. But before we get to the Noah fan stuff, I want you to grade Todd McShay's mock draft. What do you think of what the job McShay did with this two-round mock draft for the Seahawks? Grade it for me, A, B, C, D, or F. Be honest. Be critical of Todd. If you loved it, tell us. If you hated it, tell us why in the comment section below. Grade Todd McShay's mock draft and let us know. Folks, we're talking about the Seattle Seahawks each and every day here on the channel. Just got back from the Final Four in Houston. Had a great time there, but that doesn't stop us from talking about Seattle Seahawks news. When something happens, we make a point to bring you the latest happenings on your favorite team. We do a live show on Wednesdays as well. If you love your Seattle Seahawks, you need to subscribe today. I want to see how many subscribers can we get off today's video. Can we get 20? 30, 40, 50, how many subscribers can we get off today's video? If you subscribe today, type me in the comments section and let me know that you subscribe. Next up here on the program, let's talk about Noah Fant, the Seahawks tight end who was acquired last offseason in the Russell Wilson trade. According to ESPN's Mike Clay, could be on the trade block. Here's more from Mike Clay with a tweet from over the weekend. Working on Seahawks stuff and Noah Fant's huge dip in usage last season, especially being out-snapped, out-targeted, and out-produced by Kobe Parkinson when Will Disley was out during the final three games, has me wondering if he could be a surprise trade name during the draft. Let's be frank with you here, folks. Noah Fant had a disappointing year in 2023. I expected a lot more from Noah Fant and he should have been able to take that next step up as he was entering his prime, and he really just didn't do that. And as you heard from Mike Clay there, you had other tight ends that stepped up to the table and produced, like Parkinson and Disley, who were just as good, if not better, than Noah Fant was. Now, it doesn't make sense to cut Noah Fant because you're going to have to pay him that $6.89 million anyway. But if you could trade him and get a late-round pick of some sorts, that could make sense if you're the Seattle Seahawks and free up some salary cap space that you need now in order to sign these rookies with all 10 draft picks that are coming in here. So although I, I still like Noah Fant, I think he can be a very fine football player, but I expected more. And the Seahawks are in a tough spot. Not to mention, there's some pretty decent tight ends in this year's draft. You've got Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. Darnell Washington from Georgia, Dalton Kincaid from Utah. Typically speaking, we don't talk about tight ends being first-round selections. Uh, I mean, think about the best tight ends in the league. George Kittle, um, I mean, you can even go back to Gronk, Travis Kelsey. None of those guys were first-round picks. Mayer, Washington, Kincaid all might go in the first round. Now, one of them may slip and be available when the Seahawks pick with their first, second round pick. But whatever it may be, to me, that's what makes Noah Fant potentially expendable is that he is replaceable with some of the options that are out there in this draft and not to mention with the production that you saw from other guys. And we've already seen, now that the Seahawks got all their big moves in of what they did with Julian Love and Draymond Jones and Bobby Wagner and those guys, now they're starting to come back and, you know, sliver some of that, that salary, uh, per se, with the Ryan Neal move that happened over the weekend. Matt, now maybe Noah Fant could be next, so we'll see. Should the Seahawks trade Noah Fant? I don't think you're going to get much more than a late-round pick, but you are going to free up close to $7 million in salary cap space. What say you? Let me know in the comment section. Type Y for yes, type N for no, if you think the Seahawks should trade Noah Fant or not. You can interact with me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Tyler Jones Live. Talking about your Seattle Seahawks there. We are getting oh so close to the NFL draft. You know we got you covered here on the channel. I'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today. Thanks for joining us.